Hello and welcome to Brand Politics on iBrand TV. My name is Bennett Joseph and here on the program, we continue to spotlight the issues politically playing out in Nigeria, in Africa and around the world. And Nigeria is always in the focus uh, on most of the episodes on the program. Uh, recently, there was a gruesome killing in Nigeria where 43 farmers in northeastern Borno state lost their lives to members of the Boko Haram sect. What are the problems we are facing now in the area of insecurity and in what areas are the current administration failing to keep to their promise and to their mandate of providing security and, of course, uh, dealing with the problems of corruption? Joining me now to uh, discuss further on the issue of security in Nigeria is a public affairs analyst, Theophilus Osuya. He joins me again now to share his thoughts with me on the, 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 the disturbing stories of insecurity in northeastern Nigeria. Theophilus Osuya, it's a pleasure to have you on the program. Thank you, Ben, for having me on the platform. Thank you so much. It's unfortunate, my friend, that most of the time where we have to talk on this program, I wish it was on stories that needs to be, or rather stories that needed to be celebrated upon. But in, most of the time when we talk, there's always a disturbing story playing out in Nigeria or some story outside of Nigeria that in some way uh, links back to Nigeria. And we're following a rather disturbing story in Borno State where uh, over the weekend, uh, we, we saw the gruesome murder of 43 farmers in Borno State According to members of the Nigerian military, they say it's just 43 farmers that were killed and that report was confirmed and that the report was confirmed by uh, the locals in the community. But the, the, the reports from the UN say that it's actually more than 43, that we had uh, about 110 uh, Nigerians who lost their lives yes. to members of the SEC. Uh, how are you feeling about this report? Well... Uh um first thank you for having me again um uh, my outfit uh, condolence to the executive governor of uh, Borno state and um, the good people of Borno state you know um it's really a sad event and then um, you know it's, it's really painful you know that um we'll stay here after many years of uh, trying to cover insurgents you know and then um, you know, um, the conflicting reports that, uh, you know, insurgents have uh, ended or will totally annihilate the um, insurgents in the Northeast. But um, pockets of events right now really shows that, yeah, we are still battling with uh, insurgents. It's really disturbing, I must say. And then, um, however, um, we also have to commend the Nigerian security agents, you know, for all what they're doing to make sure that, um, you know, um, they try to put a stop to all of these uh, killings. You know, you can recall that um, the kind of killings we recorded in 2014, mm. the week of this whole event, 2014, 2011, you know, where we have, um, you know, larger, you know, um, killings happening, bombing taking place every year where... Uh, here and there, you know, as reduced to, you know, to the barest minima. So we really need to commend the Nigerian security operatives for that. Mm -hmm. But moving forward, I, I want to say that, you know, um, it's, it's, it, I, it, we're really overflogging this issue when we talk about the insurgents in the North is because by this time, with all of the collaboration we've had from foreign, um, 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 as, as parts coming into Nigeria to, you know, to share their ideas and then, you know, join task force from neighboring countries to ensure that uh, we put a stop to all of this. You know, uh, it's really uh, disturbing that we're still where we are. And then um, it calls for all stakeholders to really begin to look deeper and then adopt a new approach to tackling these insurgents. Mm -hmm. and now, when, when, you, when you talk about uh, commending the Nigerian uh, security apparatus, uh, the Nigerian security agencies, uh, when you look at the administration, you know that they came into power on two key mantras, which has to do with uh, uh, providing security, ending insurgency, and of course, dealing with the issue of corruption. Uh, it, it, a lot of people had really high hopes 
that uh, at this time in the, in the current administration, uh, issues of uh, insecurity will either be a thing of the past, but, or maybe at least to have been uh, defeated to its barest minimum. Are you satisfied with uh, what the current administration has done in the area of providing security for uh, uh, Nigerians? Well, uh, Ben, um, we, we still have um, these um, issues lingering because I believe personally that um, the Nigerian military force is actually doing a lot to, you know, contain the insurgents. However, there are, um, you will agree with me that there are saboteurs also, you know, that try to, you know, um, you know, bring this effort to, um, to, 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 to say that they are not doing so much you know, in uh, trying to tackle these um, security issues that we have in the, in the Northeast. Every government, of course, every government, major priority is to protect lives and property, but we would not, uh, you know, shy away from the fact that there are still pockets of events, you know, of uh, insecurity here and there in the Northeast, but they, they, really, uh, they really need to be commended, you know, compared to, where we are coming from, where we have larger scores of, you know, bombing and they are spontaneous and all of that, but they've been able to contain all of this. But, you know, we still have this, you know, issues. I'm not speaking as a spokesperson for the, you know, Nigerian military, but, you know, when you look at the reports and the facts, they are there that, you know, we've really come a long way to trying to tackle all of these um you know, pockets of events, but we can do better. We can mm. really, really do better moving mm. forward. Now, now, in most quarters, a lot of people are calling for uh, the sack of the service chiefs. Uh, at this time, there should be some kind of uh, rejigging of uh, uh, the, 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 the members sure. of the service chiefs. Uh, the Nigerian Senate also, yeah. and the House of Representatives are also taking that stand that there should be uh, the sack of the service chiefs. Is this also an opinion that you share? Okay, let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. The, the new service chiefs, right, that will take the place of these old service chiefs that have been called to you know, to, to be relieved of their duty are not alien, right? Mm -hmm. They are not alien. They are part and parcel of this same government and this same, you know, council of chiefs that are handling the security um, operations that is ongoing in the North. -East. So I really do not, you know, share with that ideology of changing the service chief because the new service chiefs you might be inviting in, they are not alien. They are part of the same, you know, uh, security agencies. So what happens to them bringing their expertise? What happens to them bringing their models, you know, to bear in combating this insurgence? Except, except, like I said earlier, except there are few persons, you know, amongst, you know, the, the, the government that are trying to sabotage the efforts of the uh, security agencies in trying to, you know, um, combat the uh, insecurity situations that we have right now in the North. So I do not really subscribe to having new service chiefs since they are not alien. They are part of this present administration. They are there in the in the in the security uh, apparatus, so they can also, you know, um, bring their expertise to bear. And again. Probably, probably, maybe, or maybe we do not have a government that is listening to them or listening to recommendations that have been made over the years. So maybe we do not have such happening, then we can begin to, you know, um, have a hmm. discussion further on this. Now, in, in the insurgency in the Northeast, uh, when you look at how it has grown over the years, you want to look at yeah. issues around education and poverty, uh, and all of that. What, what are those factors you think are responsible for how much growth insurgency has 
reason in northeastern Nigeria and now moving into southern parts of the country as well. The Boko Haram sect, the militants, the, the, the bandits, the, uh, the headsmen, the, the Iswa, so many to mention. And it seems as though there is a continuous growth progression. Uh, what are the factors responsible for this uh, negative uh, trend? Um, first of all, we must understand that um, we have a peculiar country. And um, if you look at the Northeast, most of the challenges they are facing right now is, one, the climate change is affecting the Northeast. Why are we not having this discussion? Why are we not talking about the change that is happening in the Lake Chad area, where that these farmers and most of the business people you know, draw their, you know, raw materials from, is drying up. All of this place is drying up. So why are we not having a conversation how, on how to fix, you know, the Northeast to become economic, uh, economically viable so that people do not migrate from the North to the South? Because we talk about the class between the herdsmen and the farmers, right? Mm -hmm. This is as a result of what? As a result, the, the scramble for what? For materials. They scramble for resources Limited to resources. take care of their, you know, business to go about their business. So, so, so if we begin to look inwards to say that, okay, fine, we have a responsible, a responsible government that says, okay, we want to start to address the issues in the northeast. Then we begin to look at the climatic change, the environmental factor that is going on in the northeast, and then we can begin to get it right. And don't also forget that we have a larger number. This is not to stereotype or to you know, castigate a region of the of the of the country, but we have a larger number of students out of school, children out of school rather, you know, in the northeast. So we really need to look into education. We need to begin to draft them into education and we need to begin to have you know new models. If probably they are not um you know they do not want Western education. So what happens to drafting you know, other models of probably into trade, skill acquisition, and the rest of that. So education is also a major factor why we begin, why we have all of this insecurity and migration from the Northeast to the South or to the other parts of the country. So we, be, we, we need to begin to have the discussion about the, the change that is happening, environmental change that is happening in the Northeast, education, and then, of course, a couple of other things that also affect them in the Northeast. Now, as a way, as a way to round up this conversation quickly and to take your final thoughts, uh, now, on a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate the current administration in terms of how far uh, they fared in handling the issues of uh, insecurity in the country? Well, um, we can only make recommendations, right? We, mm. can, we can continue to speak to government to, you know, to do better than what they've been doing before. I think um, um, it was um, two years ago or three years ago, the Computer Warehouse Group, you know, and IWE, you know, have jointly advised the federal government to, you know, um, you know, adopt technology as a way of, uh, you know, combing insurgents and the insecurity in the northeast and if the government will listen to all of the recommendations so far which is the way for me to to begin to tackle or uh, address the issue of insecurity in the northeast to supplement actually what you know the security agencies are already doing but so far so good they are doing okay compared to where we're coming from where we have a larger scale of bombings and mm -hmm. um you know, displace people everywhere. But, mm. you know, these are pockets of events, you know, mm. uh, just hit run as you may put it. But so far, we are, we are, we are, we are doing good and then uh, we can always improve. We can always do better. Mm, so on a scale of one to 10, you think, Dave, would you like to? Uh, it's, it's um, I would say fair. Mm. I would say fair. Mm. Um, we can do better. Interesting. All right. Uh, Theophilus Osuya, Public Affairs Analyst, always a pleasure to have your thoughts on uh, these conversations that continue to play out in Nigeria. Uh, like you rightly said at the beginning of the conversation, our condolence uh, goes out to the people of Brono State and uh, all those who have lost their lives and, of course, properties in the wake of these very disturbing 
events. We hope and we remain optimistic that uh, would, uh, Nigeria would get better going forward. Theophilus Osuya, thank you, Osuya. Thank you always for joining me on the program. Thank you. All thank right. Bye-bye.